Today, we're kicking off the Pistol Skills series of videos. Simple explanation, it's going to be a series of videos demonstrating the fundamentals of using a handgun. That's going to be the draw. That's going to be sight acquisition. That's going to be trigger press. These types of skills that everyone needs to effectively use a handgun. None of these are the only way or the perfect way to do this. These are demonstrations of what a good solid draw or a good solid sight acquisition will look like. If you prefer another way, go ahead and use the other way. This is a starting point for anybody who's new or fresher for somebody who's experienced. Whoever you are, today we're looking at the draw. When clearing garments out of the way, we want our offhand to sweep over and up and grab as close to the gun as we can get while staying as low as possible. Doing this will give us the most access we can get to the gun once we pull our clothing up and out of the way. You want your offhand to pull the clothing up to about the same height as your dominant hand will be once you clear the holster. Doing this will put your hands in a position to join together once you release your clothing. Now as you can see, I'm carrying an appendix holster and wearing a t-shirt. This means I'm grabbing my clothing pretty much on the center line of my body. If I was carrying strong side, I would reach all the way across and grab as close to the gun as possible on my strong side. Also, if I were wearing a jacket or heavier clothing in general, a one-handed grip may not be enough to clear the clothing out of the way. Depending on what you're wearing, you may have to use two hands to pull the clothing up and out of the way while you pin the clothing in place with your off hand like you would after a one-handed sweep with your off hand. Now that we have access to the gun, we can get our dominant hand on the grip. When we do this, we want the web of our hand being that space between the thumb and the index finger as high on the back of the gun as possible while still staying below the slide. Also, we want the top edge of our middle finger to ride along the bottom edge of the trigger guard. Now that the gun's out of the holster and we have both hands on, we have to put the gun on target. Two common ways people do this are what is called bowling and fishing. Bowling is where the gun comes out of the holster, sweeps down and up, Fishing is where the gun comes out of the holster, sweeps up and back down. Both of these are the long way around to put the gun where it needs to be. Instead of those, think of it like an escalator. Level the gun on target and move the gun forward and up at the same time, just like an escalator. This is going to be the most straightforward way for you to put your sights on target. Now that we have the gun extended and sights are on target, we have to think about how far we extend our arms. You can have the gun right in front of your face and be all cramped up and sights will still be on target. You could also have the gun completely extended with your elbows locked and still have sights on target. Both of them will give you a shot on target if you pull the trigger, but the following shots won't be as smooth. This is where the actual arm extension comes into play. We want to be somewhere in the middle. Your arms want to have a bend in them that still provides strength and rigidity while also allowing them to bend to act as shock absorbers for when the gun fires. This helps absorb the recoil which gives you better follow-up shots. Here you can see a bottom-up view of me shooting. My arms aren't locked out and I'm not completely compressed where the gun's right in my face. This is a good general place to be, to have comfortable grip and comfortable extension while still allowing yourself to absorb the recoil. We just looked at how far to extend our arms, but now we need to look at how fast to extend our arms. You may not think about it, but the speed at which you extend your arms matters. We all kind of know this because we extend quickly to put sights on target quickly to fire and hit the target quickly. 
Problem is, if you go too quickly the entire way through your extension, your sights are going to come off target. Here are some examples of me drawing. and You can see if I go too fast, my sights actually dip down because the muzzle into the gun snaps downward at the end of my extension. Also, you can go so fast that the muzzle comes up before it snaps down. In both cases, you're losing your sights. If you can't see your sights, you have to find them again. That takes more time and gives you a slower shot. So think of this like a speed bump in a vehicle. When you're coming up to a speed bump, you're going the speed limit. And as you get closer to it, you decelerate and slow down until you get over the speed bump. The same thing happens here. If you go too quickly, you're going to hit that speed bump and it's going to shake your gun around. Accelerate through the draw motion and decelerate towards the end where you're going to stop. That's going to give you a sight picture as you extend your arms and allow you to maintain it so you can get shots off quicker. And there you have it guys. That is what a good solid draw should look like. I covered most of the details of what a draw should have or shouldn't have, but that doesn't mean I covered everything. If I covered everything, this video would be way too long. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back with you. Likewise, if you have a video suggestion, leave that down there as well so I can look at those and make more content to answer more questions for you. With that being said, guys, as always, Take care and sharpen your skills.